This is Jen Lee. Thanks for joining me today on this Gentastic journey. Today we're going to create two window or frame cards and I'm going to be using lots of dies which I'm super excited about. So I'm using a piece of design paper and a piece of paper that I used my Distress Oxides and just put some color all over it. So this is just um, from a prior one. And I used two different embossing folders to create a little bit of interest on the backs of them. So they're both flowery. And the second one I'm going to put a little bit of ink on it because this design paper is just pink and it kind of has little splotches of other colors of pink. So I thought if I put a little bit of ink on here it might give it a little bit more interest. I think if I would have just used it without ink it would not have done what I was looking for. And there you could see it. I almost kind of created my own design paper and if you have design paper you don't really like it's a great way to change it up. <laughs> now I'm taking out some different shapes dies and I'm going to try and find one that allows me to have a little bit of a frame and those are really pretty die frames. And if you're looking for how I organize everything, I have several videos and I will include a link at the end in the description box so that you can see it. Uh, and I talk about how I store my dies, my embossing folders, things like that. So I'm just gonna trim off the edges from where the embossing folders didn't quite get to the edge. Plus that'll give me a little bit of, allow a little bit of the white to show in the card base. In this one it's a little bit more dramatic and sometimes I use these little teeny tiny pieces on the envelope or inside the card just to coordinate. I won't do that today but just an idea if you want to do something like that you can make little stripes in the corners and things like that. Okay so back to the frames. I'm going to cut these out. These, this is just some scotch removable tape that I use. It's a low tack tape and it is awesome. It never tears my paper and it's super inexpensive. I die cut that out real quick. I'm going to die cut this one out and I cut a lot out just so you guys get the idea. So now I'm, I was hoping to use some of this scrap paper but it's just too small so I'm going to use a full sheet of just some white cardstock and I'm going to try and fit as many of these flower dies as I can all over the paper and we're just going to create a ton of different flower shapes. My hope is with that green and, and yellow Distress Oxide paper that I am going to just put a ton of flowers around the frame. I'm going to cut it out of white so that I can make them whatever color I want which is kind of the beauty of using white cardstock. So I've really tried to pull out as many of the dies that I have that are flowers and you can see I keep my removable tape on the dies because I know I'm going to use them again so why take it off and either put it on the corner of my desk or whatever so I just keep it inside of how I store my dies. So I got a lot on there and I'll cut those out. I also have some greenery that I'm going to cut out as well and so I just keep die cutting and die cutting and die cutting and we have quite a few shapes at the end of it. So now I'm going to push them all out and see if I feel like I have enough at this stage. These all cut out beautifully which I was really happy about. So I used this sticky mat. It's a standard adhesive mat so it's got some good tech and it just keeps it in place when I am coloring it with my Distress Oxide and this is my Seedless Preserves. It's a nice purpley pinky color and I just start to have a lot of fun with this and I'm almost spending too much time doing this because you won't see a lot of the detail that I put into this but this is something I really enjoy doing so why not have fun with it and make these flowers look amazing plus I wasn't sure how many flowers I would actually need so maybe some of them would be one layer versus layering some of them so might as well put some time into it and make them look all really pretty. So I used a lot of my Distress Oxides just to make them all as colorful as I wanted. I wanted one really really fun colorful card and then the other card I'm going to make it a little bit more of a serious card or just a little bit more sophisticated I guess. This is my fun card. <laughs> so using lots of greens and I cleaned this little paintbrush thing but you can see that there's a little bit of the red that I had used earlier that's coming through. So I changed to a dauber instead because I think that 
I thought at the time that I wanted them to be green, but you'll see later on that I do end up going back and putting some of that mauve -y color back over the green leaves. So back to these two frames, I decide I'm going to actually make a window out of this one, and then the other one I'll keep as a frame. And so I cut it out a size smaller so that there's actually a little bit of the white showing through. And I thought I was going to use a stamp, but you'll see I changed my mind and give up the stamp idea and I go into my stash of sentiments. These are sentiment strips and things like that. And again, if you watched my last tips and tricks video, I get real organized by putting things on my press and seal. I cut things out in advance and then they're ready to go and so you can see here that I'm picking out some that I think might coordinate well with these two cards. I decided to go with some shimmer vellum because that's a pretty busy design paper and I don't think you'll be able to see the sentiment very well so you can always kind of mute that busy design paper by adding some vellum. And here I'm going to adhere this to the inside of my car by making sure that it covers that hole where I cut the window out. And so that's just a really easy way to do that to make sure it's exactly going to be where I want it. And then I'll just press the other side in and it'll be exactly where I need it to be. Voila! So I've decided I don't want this to be white. It's the one thing I don't really like about the sentiment strips and things like that is they're always so white. So I decided to use the Moody Mauve again. It's a Stampin' Up! stamp pad. It's a little dark, but you'll see later on, I love how it comes out. And I'm having a little trouble getting this off the sticky pad. So I'm gonna adhere the vellum. With vellum, as you know, you don't really want to see the adhesive. So I'm going to pop up my sentiment with some foam tape and I'm just cutting out small pieces so I can make sure I get it all the way around because this is going to go in the mail. And this way I'll be able to put that where it's going to be on the vellum and then I could put the adhesive where that sentiment strip is so that you won't see the adhesive on the vellum, if that makes sense. So you see here I'm going to put the glue where that sentiment strip is and you'll never see it. So that's another little trick. And then I'm going to pull off the backing off of my foam tape and we'll put that sentiment on as well. I really like that. I do have a little bit of wiggle room left still because I'm going to slightly move that vellum because I don't like how it's lined up there, but it's super easy to move and perfect. Back to the other sentiment strip. I've decided I'm going to use that smaller piece and make kind of a frame inside of a frame. I'm going to put lots of flowers around it, so I just wanted it, that sentiment to have something to sit on instead of the white. And we'll use that little other little frame later on. But I decided to use my Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink, again, to get rid of all that white. I don't love white. <laughs> So I'm getting rid of some of the white, just kind of dabbing it on. And then I'm also going to use some picked raspberry just around the edges. And I like the way that look came out. Plus I'm going to use that picked raspberry on the birthday sentiment strip as well, so they'll coordinate really well together. You can see that's a teeny tiny birthday wishes sentiment strip. Then I add a little bit more of that picked raspberry because I wanted them to coordinate really well together. Okay, I'm going to just set these in here so that when I put my flowers on there, I'll kind of know how much room I have. And what I'm trying to do here is just to make sure I have enough flowers. So I'm going to put some of the bigger ones in the corner is the plan. So I'm just kind of laying them out here so I can say to myself, do I need to make more flowers? Am I going to be able to lace, layer some of these flowers? So these are the kinds of things that are going through my head at this point. And I ended up throwing that sentiment strip in there just so that I could make sure that I'm not going to go over that piece either. So I've decided I have plenty, so I'm going to assemble this. And I didn't pop this up on any foam tape. I think I'm just going to let the flowers have their own dimension. And I did pop up the sentiment piece. It's really not a sentiment strip, is it? Well, I keep calling it a sentiment strip, but you guys know what I mean. I think it's a pretty one, and I think it'll be this hoping your day blooms with happiness is perfect for this card.
again, I'm just throwing some of these on here and then I'll start gluing them together. But I am first going to want to give them all a little bit of dimension. So I started to cheat with my craft tweezers and then got a, this is a little razor knife thing, and I'm just going to curl those petals a little bit. It makes all the difference in the world if you could do something like this because it just gives them all their own dimension and then when you start to layer them they look fantastic. Even though this is going in the mail I will use one of my own envelopes and I will link in the description box and above here my video where I show how I make my own envelopes and that just helps because I can make it out of thicker paper so that things don't get as crushed and I also give them a little bit more room. I really like to make my own envelopes when I can. And here I'm just starting to layer some pieces together. And I'm just making sure they're different colors so that I have lots of different colors. I wanted this to be just fun and happy and bright and I love these flowers. So now I'm just going to move them out of the way so that I can put this card in there and then start Oops, forgot one. Um, I'll glue that together and then we'll start assembling. Okay, so here's the fun part. I'm just going to glue these down. You could do a number of things. You could use um, little glue dots would work here as well. I just, I love my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and so I, it never fails me. So I'm using that. And you can see I'm pushing it down a little bit in the middle because all the dimension are on the petals. So I don't want to push down on the petals, but I want to definitely make sure that that middle stays. And like before, I'm just trying to put some of the bigger flowers in the corners and then fill in the rest. That just works in my brain. <laughs> so that's how we're going to do it. I do want to leave a little bit of white so that it really looks like a frame. You'll see at the end it gets pretty busy and so I kind of give up on that concept, but you still see the white. It's just you don't really see the shape of the, the dies that I cut out the frame with. It's okay. It looks pretty and I'm really happy with how this card came out. It came out way better than I had even anticipated and as you guys know I don't plan these cards in advance. I just kind of have it a general idea. Like I was like I really want to play with some of my flower dies. And you can see I'm sort of moving things around here because I want there to be different colors in different parts of the card. So I thought there was too many oranges all there together. So <laughs> I start tearing things off and, and replacing them. And here's where I'm starting to be like, oh, am I going to have enough? Is this going to look filled in enough? But I think it's going to turn out just fine. I have this one with the long petals that I might just tear that middle part out and then see where we go from there. That's what I end up doing. I used some of the smaller flowers and it looks nice. It fills them in pretty nicely. And it was like I made the perfect number of flowers. I have this one left over but I'm going to put it in a corner and then I'll just kind of trim it off and then see if I can use it elsewhere. I loved these flowers so much I really didn't want to waste any of them and I don't even want to waste a half of one so you'll see I'm going to try and put that somewhere else and in fact I like it so much that I'm going to cut it in half and use it again and here I'm getting to a point where I'm like hmm I'm not sure what I want to do so I pull out the other card if I'm kind of at a block I'll pull out something else or go to a different part of the card and then I come back and here I come back <laughs> it doesn't take me long it's just I need to take a break from it. So if you ever get stuck work on the envelope or work on the inside, that just helps me sometimes if I'm spending too much time on something. I'm like, Jennifer, just walk away for a second. <laughs> so here's where I said, you know what? I actually like the one that has the mistake with the mauve that got stuck on that brush. And so I end up putting a little bit of mauve on all of these. We're going to make like a little wreath around that happy birthday window. But first I decide that I want to chop off all the corners. Don't know why, it just felt like I needed to get rid of those. It's a little too much white, I think. And now I'm going to work on this second card. And in the same vein, I decided I wanted something fancy in the corners, so I used this corner punch that I have. My sister bought me for my birthday, and I use it all the time. I love to make the corners different in cards, whether I cut them off or use a corner punch. I use a lot of corner punches, but doesn't that just make it look just more elegant somehow? <laughs> I love corner punches. So if you have one or just, you know, corner it with a scissors. And I just think it makes all the difference sometimes. 
Okay, I'm really liking that. So I'm going to start gluing these on. This one I want to keep it a little bit less popped up. I do decide I want to put a little bit of that Moody Mauve Stampin' Up! ink around the edges. And I'm just using the dauber I used earlier. I didn't re-ink it or anything like that. It's just enough ink that you can just barely see it. And then I decide to put it on the inside of that frame too. And it, I just, I think some of these small touches really make the difference in a card. Isn't that pretty? I loved it. I am one of those people though that I'll, I'll keep going and going, and going. So sometimes I just need to say, Jennifer, stop. <laughs> so here I am assembling it. I'm missing one. <laughs> And then now I think I will glue them together. Yes, here we go. And my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue is great for this. I can't say that word very, or those combination of words very well, but it is a great glue. I always forget to use some of my adhesive backing, those sheets, adhesive sheets. It's okay because I'm really good with the glue and it doesn't ever, you can't ever see it, so it's perfect. And that's really pretty. It's really simple, but it's much more elegant than this fun, crazy card. And then in that video that I'm going to link, and I'll link it above here as well. This is the one where I did the tips and tricks. I made all of these in advance, and this is the perfect time for those because I decided I needed just something more. And so I just pulled out one of these ones that I made it in advance and stuck them in the back of that envelope. And so here I'm gonna pop that out and we're gonna put a little bit of green on there. And that's just going to fill in all these flowers floating uh, just didn't do it for me. So I needed a little bit of greenery and, and just to cut up that a little bit too much white on that card for me. And this is just two different Distress Oxide inks and that just gives it a little bit more interest. And so I'm just going to kind of cut this apart and use different pieces of it in different spots. It doesn't have to look like it's connected to anything, but it's just going to break it up a little bit with all those flowers just like look like they're all just stuck there. This will look like maybe there's actually some leaves and stems and things like that. So I liked how this kind of finished it off a little bit. Those are the same colors that I used in the background paper. So that way they coordinated really well because these are a little bit darker. And I'm just cutting them and sticking them where I think they might look good and cutting pieces off. And I think this is going to make this card even better. I was loving it to begin with, but I think this will just give it a little something more. If you're ever having a bad day, work on a few fun, pretty flowers and it will change the whole day for you. This card made me happy to make. And I have someone in mind for it and she is someone that brings happiness to life. So I think she will enjoy this card quite a bit. And there we go. So I'll glue these all down and we are, will be good to go. And I'll cut that part of it, out of it so you don't have to watch it. But this is the last one I'm putting in place and they're all glued together. And that turned out really pretty. I do need to work on the inside of that card, but there they are both so far. I pull out some of my gem embellishments and I want to put some in the centers of those flowers and then I need to do something to that second happy birthday card just to give it a little bit more. So these are just some gems that have the flat bottoms. I decided I'm going to put all the same color. It's such a bright pink and I thought that would be really, really pretty just to put them in the center so they all, instead of them all looking totally different, they all kind of coordinate together. <laughs> At least that was my thought and I really like the way this came out. And I do cut out a little bit of this too because I'm just gluing and gluing and gluing and sometimes they're getting stuck to my fingers. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun with putting these on as well and I think it really made this card that much more fun. And I've got this super fast forwarded so, and there they are. Okay, for this one, I can't really decide what I want. These gems are just too bright for that kind of subtle card. So I pull out some of my fabric flowers and those were pretty, but they were awfully big. <laughs> so I have these fabric flowers and they have a little rhinestone in the center. And I thought, you know what? 
that kind of matches, or at least coordinates a little bit. So I pull out a couple of those, and then I take out that same dauber, and I still haven't re-inked it, and I'm just gonna go around the edges. And if you have something like this where it doesn't quite match, but it will coordinate a little bit better if it's got a little bit more of that mauve in it, then heck, put it on the corners of, of the flowers. Have fun with it. That's what this is all about. And again, I think all these little touches are the things that make handmade cards that much more special. I forgot this little sentiment strip. I found it when I was working on that other card, so I need to find out where I'm gonna kind of stick it, where it's not gonna cover up a lot of my flowers. So I decided to put it right there, and it's just gonna peek out there because it is a birthday card. I always need more birthday cards than anything else, so we'll glue down these pretty fabric flowers. And I end up, I have, I do this all the time. I have them set one way, and then once I glue them down, put them a different orientation. You get to, nobody knows all the different changes that you make along the way. It's just what keeps this fun, right? And I really like how that jazzed up that card. Those rhinestones are really pretty. They coordinate well with that card because it's kind of a fancier card. And then I just put my very smallest rhinestone looking gem on the eye, the dotted the eye for birthday and that looks really good. And I'm gonna show you some close-ups in a second with a different camera and you'll be able to see a lot more of the detail. And for this one, I haven't done the inside yet, so I almost forgot about it. I picked up a really nice sentiment because again, I know who this one is going to and I want it to be really nice. I was hoping to use my Stamping Up stamp pad, but I don't always have luck with sentiments and stamping. So as you can see, I'm so glad I used a, a piece of scrap paper because I did not like how that came out. So I went back to my Memento Black Ink, which is my go-to for sentiments because it never fails me. It may go on a little bit light, but then I can redo it and redo it till I get it to the color I want. That is what I did. And then because the outside is so bright, I decided to put some washi tape on the inside to coordinate and it's fun washi tape. So it's these little teeny thin strips and then I also found some lace washi that would coordinate with that green color. So I'm gonna use that as the base and then I'll put some of that sparkly thin washi around it. It's funny, I, I thought it was just all like solid green and then when I found out it was lace, I was like, ooh, bonus. <laughs> I hadn't used this washi before. So I think this is gonna look pretty because it'll be a little bit jazzier because that black sentiment, it, it's just too, too stark for this fun card. And I keep popping my head in there because I want to make sure it's straight. And I just put a little glue because you never know how sticky washi tape is or isn't going to be, so it's always safest to adhere it down. You can also wrap it around if you have something that's going to go on the other side, but because it's this is my card base, I couldn't do that. And then I ended up putting this orangey color because there's so much orange in the front of the card. I thought it went a little bit better when you put the orange on there. So what do you think? I liked that. And then I got back to this one. I'm like, hmm. So I went to the envelopes. These are some handmade envelopes I made when I did my envelope video and I haven't had a chance to use them. So I decided to use them today. And then I also wanted to coordinate the envelopes. I like to coordinate the envelopes with my cards. So I usually use some leftover paper. And in this case, I'm just putting a happy birthday stamp on there. And then I Put a, used some marker and made a few flowers. And I like how that coordinates together really well. That is one fun card, isn't it? <laughs> and it's got a fun envelope to go with. And then here's my second one, which is a little bit more subtle. And I decided it needs a little something more on the inside. So I put some of that same Moody Mauve and I'm using, I still haven't re-inked it. I'm just using it and it's nice because it's a little subtle when you don't have to re-ink it. That is a beautiful card and just in just a second you'll see it up close so here it is so this is just a different camera angle and so you get to see all of the dimension and those fabric flowers are really pretty they have a lot of texture to them and so does that vellum isn't that vellum pretty i love that card and then here's my super fun, happy, flowery card. And I love all those centers of those flowers that I glued on. And then the bright, wacky washi tape as well. So it's two fun cards, two frames. And I like the, the way 
that we did those two cards. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you would, please click the like button and let me know how much you liked it. Also, uh, I am a small channel, so if you would subscribe to my channel, I would sincerely appreciate it. And you can also hit the notification bell and it'll let you know every time I put out a new video, which is twice weekly. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.